Welcome back uh, to the studio here. Good to have you with us this morning. Now, what happens when you smash together atoms with ten times the force of the Large Hadron Collider? Well, we might get to find out in the year 2040. CERN has unveiled plans for a successor to their Large Hadron Collider, and it's even larger. And in other science news, what's just happened on the moon uh, has never happened before. Well, we'll be uh, talking about that with our science and technology reporter, Jeremy Wilkes, who's here in the studio to answer those questions and plenty more. Uh, let's start with this new uh, collider. Uh, a very exciting thing for the science world, isn't it? It is. This is a project called the Future Circular Collider. So um, it is huge. I mean, the, the Large Hadron Collider is large already. It's 27 kilometre tunnel underground, a most impressive place if you go there and get the chance to visit. This new plan they have is a 100 kilometre tunnel. Basically, the idea in particle physics is the bigger you go, the more energy you can smash stuff together with, the more interesting science you can get out of it. Um, now, the Large Hadron Collider, which is there now, is the device that we use to discover the Higgs boson, which indicates the Higgs field, which helps us to understand where uh, the mass comes from in, in, in matter. And the idea is that looking forward, I mean, this is long term planning, if they can build this new collider, the 100 kilometer one, then they can enter into new physics, perhaps start to look at things like um, uh, dark matter, which we know surrounds us. It's all over the place. It's here with us now, but we can't see it. We think if we can smash particles together at extremely high energies, then we can do that. And as I say, big is really important. There is a competing project. There's one in China, similar size, 100 kilometers. And talking to people in the particle physics community, they think probably one or the other will get built. There's a, a, a lot of argument for CERN in Geneva simply because it's um, got a lot of experience and been doing it for 60 years. So um, let's hope they can make it work. We'll see over the next two years if it gets funded. Mm, and there's a, another China, you mentioned China, there's another Chinese uh, project, this time on the moon, yes. uh, that's been making uh, headlines uh, this morning. Tell us about that one. Yes, they have actually. Um, grown for the first time a very, very small plant on the moon. This is um, they've basically on the uh, Changi 4 lander, which went there, uh, landed there earlier this year, they had some seeds on board and uh, they've actually started to sprout. So it's a cotton seed that started to grow. It's the first time that any plant has grown on a body other than Earth. So we've had plants grow in the International Space Station before, but it's the first time we've had this happen um, on another planet or moon. It isn't actually growing in the soil of the moon. It's very important to say it's in this kind of mini biosphere. The idea is that you could create some kind of um, artificial version of what we've got on planet Earth, where gases from the plants are um, breathed in by insects or animals and then etc. They can kind of go into this system and uh, help each other to grow. But that's the, the vision and it's actually worked, which is which is wonderful. When you see a little photo, you see this sprout, you think, wow, that's there on the moon. 